Randy is, is running sound by the iPad while playing vibraphone at the same time tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 
song will start off at least start off featuring our percussionist the song is entitled the marching song number two Thank you. 
shades of green. Shades of sheets of sheets of sheets of green. So this this is the title track from the album titled Shades of Green.
to um, talk about uh, Eddie Green and uh, Jim Miller. I'm going to start out because uh, Eddie Green was my mentor and we played and recorded together for 20 years. Playing with him uh, was like going to school, like going to jazz school, like going to Berkeley. Uh, he took a theatrical singer and turned her into a real jazz singer. And uh, hearing this music again, Don, it, it it, I'm, I'm crying out there, you know. It sounds so wonderful. It really does. And uh, and of course, uh, Jim Miller was a very important person in my life, along with Eddie. They both were very important to me, and uh, I miss them so. I really do. I really miss them. But so let's go around the robin here. Don, why don't you 
why don't you start since this is your baby here. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I had the pleasure of uh, playing with Eddie first, really to go into the jam sessions with Tyrone, uh, Tony Williams, um, at the old Blue Note, uh, Slim Coopers, <coughs> many other places on Stenton Avenue, some of which I can't remember the names anymore. <laughs> and then uh, had the privilege of Eddie asking me to do some of his tunes, and we did uh, several gigs at, at local clubs, and uh, he actually rewrote the tunes so they would be in bass clef, so I could look <laughs> at them. And, uh, and had the pleasure of playing in that group along with uh, Jeff Lee Johnson. Um, and of course, with Jim Miller, we, Ty, I remember several gigs with Tyrone Eddie, me, Jim Miller. We did some weddings down in Cape May together. <laughs> hung, hung out in the, in the green tile liquor store down there. And, and, and lots of good times. And, and again, it was such a privilege to play this original music. And uh, so happy to get to do it again now. All right, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Eddie, Eddie Green. Um, I, it's wow. I mean, my, my, my experience with with Eddie Green is is sort of twofold. Um, I met Eddie Green the same time I met this legendary bass player, Mr. Tyrone Brown. I met them at the same time because. I was a young man in high school, and um, I got a chance to, to meet the great Odin Pope, and he had a mean group called the Saxophone Choir. And I don't know if any of you guys are familiar, and a lot of people are familiar with, with this group Catalyst, but the Saxophone Choir in particular was phenomenal. They had some great players, almost the best saxophones in the city were in his band. He had a, always had a, a wonderful rhythm section. But what drove the sound of the saxophone section was not the saxophones at all. And being in this band with Don, looking at these arrangements, I got a chance to spend some time with Eddie's arrangements up close, and you can see what actually drove the saxophone choir. It was Eddie Green and Mr. Tom Brown. It created a sound that was unbelievable. And a lot of jazz musicians, young jazz musicians, if they're truthful, pattern themselves after this whole, after their whole approach to, to improvisation. So I don't think enough credit is given to, to these two gentlemen. Um, Jim Miller, I'm, my relationship with him is kind of is, is is goes back far, far too because I was a young man again, in high school, going to University of the Arts. I was a freshman at University of the Arts. That's what it was. And he had a band called Reverie. And man, they used to, they used to kill, that was a killing band. And it was a club on um, 18th Street called All That Jazz. Yeah. I used to go into All That Jazz, sneak in the club, because I was only 18. I had no business being in that club, and my parents knew they would have killed me. <laughs> but I snuck in there, man, and I would sit up there and watch this guy play. Like, and, 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 it was a, that was a, a great, great group. I mean, Gerald Beasley came out of that, Ed Yellen, so a lot, a lot of really great players came out of that. But that's my, that's my relationship with those two gentlemen, so, man. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, Jim Miller first, because there's something I've been thinking about Jim a lot lately. Um, those of you who knew Jim knew that Jim liked to follow politics, and there were certain members of politics that he was less favorable on. And the other day, when I saw a certain person in politics referred to as a complete idiot, I thought, wow, what a shame that Jim's not here to read that headline. He would have truly enjoyed it. Now, we, we always had fun in between sets talking about this stuff. You would have enjoyed the train, too. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, Eddie. I met Eddie, as did Don, along the same time I met Ty, over at uh, the Blue Note, LG's Blue Note, sitting in on the jam sessions. And uh, for many years, did a few things here and there. And finally, at one point, we realized we lived really near each other. 
And he started coming over to the house in the mornings, and we'd rehearse in the mornings a couple days a week, like at 7 o'clock in the morning. Eddie used to like to get up early. Um, I'll never be able to thank him enough for the education. I mean, I, I knew he had plans to like record the stuff, but I was just like, yeah, teach me more, teach me more. <laughs> because he was such a master, such a master. With these charts here, I, I, I mean, I was, as he was tweaking these charts, I was there watching. I still have the ones with his markup on them. And it was, it was an education for me, seeing not just, not just what a master does, but seeing how he hones his craft, even after some of these tunes were tunes that Ty and Eddie recorded with Catalyst. 15, 20 years before I even met them, and yet he was still in there changing them up. The tune which we played earlier tonight, Marching Song, song Number 2, it is number two because it is what's called a counterfact. It's an alternate melody on another song. Uh, the original song was Little Miss Lady, a tune that they recorded with, uh, with Catalyst, and it's not only a ballad, but it's in 3-4. It's like a little waltz. And so he was constantly, constantly changing things and oh what an education i just learned so much from him. i'm deeply grateful that i was able to spend the time that i did with him well i'll start by saying i'm the youngest out of this band so uh, <laughs> my, my experiences with these uh with the two musicians with uh, eddie and jim uh, it's maybe not as fruitful as all these men up here I'm working with tonight, but uh, I think what they said kind of like encompasses what, what they meant to me. I think I met Eddie first through, um, my brother worked at Odin Pope's saxophone choir. His name's Robert Landon. And I think I met Eddie then, I was about 10 years old. And I think I had the opportunity to work with him a couple times when I was a teenager. I just remember getting really like beat up really bad on the bandstand. <laughs> Nonetheless, it was a great experience. And uh, what a great musician. I can't really say much other than he's so great. And Jim, I think I met at Ortlieb's years ago. I was a young drummer. I worked there a lot. And, uh, and I just remember talking with him and uh, some of the conversations we would talk about musicality. And I know he always had this really good sense of swing. And he played with a lot of passion. <laughs> and that's about all I can say. These guys were wonderful musicians. I love them. I miss them. I want to speak before Mr. Tyrone Brown because he really has a lot of information. Um, but what I want to first say is that I'm grateful to, for the realness of the music that uh, Mr. Eddie Green brought to music. You know, sometimes music can be predictable and you can think you know where it's going, but sometimes somebody else brings something to it that is life. And when you hear it, it speaks into you. That is the touch that Mr. Eddie Green has, and his music is so incredibly awesome. And wait for it, wait for it. And uh, Jim Miller, the same kind of template, I would say, when they played music, you know, it, it really wasn't academic sounding. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was about some life things, some life experiences, and it makes such a difference when, when you get to hear someone that plays music through the language of life, rather than a, a cerebral academic kind of thing, because you really don't get any too much from that. So I am so grateful for people like Mr. Tyrone Brown, and Jim Miller and Mr. Eddie Green. I had the honor and pleasure of playing with Eddie and Jim for a number of years, and uh, we became a rhythm section for quite a few groups over the years, I mean, many, many years. And um, one of the experiences that I, I'm thinking about now we were playing uh, at, a, at a place, I think it's a place you mentioned, uh, I forgot the name of it. Blue uh, Blue Note, right, yeah. yeah. And um, a guy came up to us uh, after the uh, first set, and he said, man, you guys are really something. He said, man, that groove, everything you do, 
It makes me want to dance. Even you play fast music, you can play Latin rhythms. So when you just play ballads, I, I, I move. And he said, and I noticed you guys are, despite your experiences, you're humble enough to let inexperienced guys join us or musicians uh, join us on uh, join you. And he said, do you mind if I sit in with you guys the next set? He said, not at all. What's your instrument? He said, I can't play an instrument. I just want to be on a bandstand. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of a story that uh, Jim used to tell about the, one of the first times he played with Tyrone was at the Borgia. And uh, Jim's, Jim's very intimidated playing with uh, Tyrone. And he said, uh, Tyrone kept turning to him and saying, Don't you feel that? And Jim was going, Oh, I must be really horrible. Because, and then, then another set would go by, and, and, and Ty would say, Don't you feel that? <laughs> and Jim was like getting really upset. And finally, Tyrone turned to him and said, Don't you feel that water dropping from the snow? <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. It is a true story. We love telling that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, rem I remember the first time I met Eddie, believe it or not, I needed a, uh, a piano player. I was playing a middle of the road gig in, in the Holiday Inn and I called Dave Postman Tier and I said, I hear you play jazz piano, do you mind doing this gig with me? He says, well I can't, but why don't you call this guy Eddie Green? I had no idea who he was at the time. So I said, I talked to him on the phone, I said, you're, you know you're gonna to have to come in and audition for my band. <laughs> so, so he comes in with Morris Bailey, you guys know Mo Bailey, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they come into the Holiday Inn, and once Eddie walked in, my drummer, after, he was, uh, Jim wasn't my drummer then, it was a guy named Nick Simonali, and he freaked out. He said, you have Eddie Green auditioning for this band? <laughs> And I said, well, who is he? <laughs> but um, but as, the minute he sat down the piano, you know, it was like, you're higher, of course. So that just started us on a whole trajectory for the next 25 years. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I miss them both. All right, now we're going to bring the band back once again. Come on, guys, I'll put this back on the thing. And uh, let's have another round of applause for Don Collins. Lewis Taylor, Randy Sutton, Jerome Brown, Arthur Landon, and Eric Graves. We're going to end tonight's show with the, the greatest hits uh, from Eddie's first album, Last Time I Saw Janine. Oh, yes! Yes, yes. Last time she divorced me. You just saw last night, right? No. That was my wife's name. Oh, really? That's my new sister. My sister and I have a sister. Sister. Thank you very much.